Hi, everybody. My guest today on The Record Player is a young lady who has grown up surrounded by the entertainment business and has a brand new single out called Turn Off the Phone, uh, another one out tomorrow uh, called Go F Yourself, and her full debut album will be out at the end of this coming January uh, 2022. Welcome to TRP, Georgia Valentine. How are you, Georgia? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing rather well, thank you. Um, you, it's been a busy month for you, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of two new singles out. Um, the song is doing really well so far. Uh, turn on off the phone. Uh, tell me a little bit about that song. So I made it with my friend Jake Donaldson, who's who produces all of my songs, and we were we usually just like mess around in the studio, and and, and end up making something crazy. And he was just like playing stuff on his computer and he played like a gospel kind of intro like the, um yeah, the beginning, yeah. yeah and i was like that sounds really cool and i was like i've never done anything kind of with like a weird gospel <laughs> pop kind of genre and i was like i think that this would be really cool to mess around with and so basically he just started producing it and and he was like this these are the chords I'm going to do stuff in my headphones. And while I do that, like you just write. And um, yeah. And I just like came up with the lyrics and like sitting on the couch thinking about like random things. I was like, okay, what do I want to write about? And I was like, okay. Um, I was going through like relationship stuff at the time. And I was like, what do I do? Like to like calm myself down. And I was like, all I do is play music and <laughs> throw my phone away. So I was like, I'm just going to write about it. And it just turned into a song in like a few hours. We just literally wrote it and then we're like, that's sick and recorded it. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, the, the song's doing real well um, streaming so far, tons of streams, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of views on, on YouTube. Um, the new, it sucks that we're doing this interview today and the new single drops tomorrow. So I haven't heard it yet, but yeah. judging by the title, it's either a really fun song or a really scary song. I don't know quite which way to go. <laughs> Very fun. It's it's definitely like a, a good song to chant to. There's chanting in it. Oh, good. So it's it's alternative pop. It's definitely a little bit grungier than the first one. So I started off with a very happy, dancey song, and this one's more of like a like a feminist, <laughs> crazy song. So I'm excited. Uh, you you mentioned Jake Donaldson. Uh, you you did a song with him at the beginning of the year as well, Bluffing. Uh, that, that was on his record? Yeah. So he was releasing an album and um, he wanted to make a duet and I wrote it for him and he was like, you should sing it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I would <laughs> love to. And he was like, okay, get onto the microphone. And we've we've been writing a lot recently. He's releasing another, like a deluxe album and we wrote another song together that's going to be released um, on the 31st of December. So, cool. And you did a, a Christmas song. Out. You did a Christmas song together too, right? Yeah, we did a Christmas song. We did that as well. We write, we write everything together. So <laughs> we always end up making duets and releasing them. You mentioned that he produces the new record. Uh, does he sing any, any other songs on the, on the record when it comes out as well or with you? Um, not on mine. Mm-hmm. mine's like completely solo i don't have any duets anything um on his i'm on one of his songs called new uh and then the rest are just him um have you done any music videos at all for for the two for the singles no i haven't i really want to do something acoustic because most of the things like i've like i spent like most when i've been writing for a really long time i only use the piano and that was it And so most of my songs are very, like, they don't sound like they should be, but a lot of them stem from calm, piano, like, slow ballads. So I really had to, like, transition from that to going into more poppier and upbeat and adding drums and, like, guitar and things like that. So I think I'm going to go back to that and start just releasing, like, the like the very raw part of it and just go sit at the piano and record it somewhere. And then like a, maybe like a studio downtown in Toronto. Good. Um, I'm an old dad. I got kids your age, so I'm used to records coming out and then the singles coming out afterwards, but you, everything gets done backwards nowadays. You guys put out the singles and then the album eventually comes out. Uh, do we That's have a type? My mom said. See, it's silly. <laughs> yeah. 
I prefer the old way myself, but uh, uh, the, do, do we have a title for the record yet? Yeah, it's called 1111. Oh, okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, and that's end of January, you said? Yeah. How many more singles are we going to get before? <laughs> one more single, and it's called Ventura Boulevard. Oh, cool. And that one is very, um, it's about California. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> the title. But, um, yeah, that one's um, out two weeks before the single. Uh, two weeks before the album's out. So I get that single, and then two weeks out, the whole album comes out. Uh, you wrote all the stuff stuff on the album. You've been writing since you were a kid. I mean, so you you write all your own stuff. Yeah, I write and everything. I've been writing. Yeah, I I write all the lyrics, everything myself. Um, so being around the entertainment industry as long as you have been your entire life, for the most part, uh, your dad behind the camera, your mom in front of the camera. Um, I know your mom is a singer as well, uh, as well as being on TV and, and radio. Uh, have you always known that this is what you wanted to do since you were little or? Yeah, uh, my parents, like, it really influenced me a lot, like a lot, because they put me in singing, dancing and acting since I could like walk. So that's all I ever knew. And I was surrounded by it with my parents. So when I would go to visit my mom at work, I thought like that's just what everyone did. Everyone was involved in the entertainment industry <laughs> and yeah, she did sing a lot around the house. And so in like second grade, I think I started writing music and I, I'm really thankful because my parents are so supportive, mm -hmm. but when I started right away, they like, they were like, this is amazing. You have to keep doing it. So yeah, it's always, I was really into musical theater. So I go to school for musical theater right now. Mm -hmm. Um, and throughout the pandemic was just when I really focused on music, when I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And this is what like makes me really happy. Uh, You're focusing yeah. on the music part of it right now. Um, you and your mom do the mother daughter date as well, uh, which I mean, it, it, do you have any interest in doing television or anything like that? Like she does or? Yeah, for sure. I really do enjoy it. And I did a lot of stuff with her when she was on the radio and she'd bring me in for like segments. And I like love to talk. I can talk for like a year and without even breathing. So um, she found that out like quickly on that I could come on with her. And yeah, I really do enjoy that stuff too. Like definitely entertainment is something I've always been a, like has been a huge part of my life. And like, I look up to my mom as a person. So when she did it, that's for a little bit, I was like, I could, I could see myself on a show as a host um yeah I, we still do it from time to time um well you guys were doing yeah. a lot of um uh like promotional things and, and stuff for you know contests and getting other mothers and yeah. out with you. that must have been a hoot yeah we just i think it just realized that like people we started gaining a following mm -hmm. on it like b mostly because it started out with my mom and people were like really like grasping towards it because there are so many mothers and daughters out there who can relate so they just started getting really invested into the account and stuff and so we were like maybe we can start doing things like events and giving stuff away because like my mom loves giving back to people and loves giving stuff away like she just want like she that was a lot of her career so yeah we started messing around with that and then next you know we had like an event going on for mother daughter date and then um people started calling about maybe doing contests for people and it's just like you find people in the community who really deserve something mm -hmm. and and so it's like giving away a trip to like a family a mother and daughter it's like a mother who works three jobs and stuff like that like it, mm -hmm. it was just like a, it's very like rewarding for m myself as well as doing it for anyone else um you you mentioned uh going to school for musical theater you went to school for did you go to new york for just a year or and yeah then, um what was that like being away from home and and uh, how much fun was that being away from home <laughs> yeah, it was exciting it, it's crazy thinking about it now because when i left i was like oh i'll be back in like february and i went back in for a little bit and it was right before the pandemic and it's just really cool to be i've been in toronto my entire life so moving to new york and kind of getting to experience that was ex like insane like i can't even explain it and i did um a comedy course which was probably like 
the most out of my comfort zone I've ever been in. So it was just like for the first time, really, really being uncomfortable, which I think is a good thing. But at the time, it was like terrifying. But it, it, I learned a lot from it. Um, again, as I, as I mentioned, watching, following your, your mom and stuff on social media, watching you guys kind of grow up in front of us. Um, I know that you're a huge Billy Joel fan. Did you get to see Billy Joel while you were in New York at, at Madison Square? Yeah, I did. We went before, actually. We, uh, we went in the summer. My mom was like, he plays at Madison Square Garden. Would you want to go? And I was like, yeah, I would. <laughs> and she's like, okay, we can maybe go for a weekend. So we went for the weekend. And this was before I even knew I was moving there. Like, I thought that I, I, I was going to go to England. So I had no idea. And, I, and we went and, and we got caught in the rain. So I had to get like changed before we were wearing like weird clothes that we bought off the street because we were drenched in water and it was the best. Oh my gosh. It was so good. It was so worth the trip too. And then at the end, um, the cameraman next to me noticed that I was dancing the whole time and he was like, don't move. Like, I'll be right back. And he went backstage and he got, um, drumsticks that I have, like they're on my wall right now and guitar picks. And he came back and he was like, it's so nice to see like a young person really appreciating this generation of music because I was dancing so much. He's like, I'd love to see it. So here you go. And he just gave me the guy's drum sets, uh, the drumsticks. And I was like, okay, thank you. So I had a great time. That's cool. Um, the a couple of rapid fire questions before we take off. Um, the, which, if you had to do a Billy Joel cover, which I don't know if you would even want to do because he's your favorite. But if you had to just sing any Billy Joel song, a cover of it and record it, which one would it be? I'm going to go really basic and I'm going to say Vienna. Mm -hmm. I've heard just, you perform that. You could, you, you could swing that, no problem. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's one of my go-to songs too, just to sing, because it's so beautiful and everybody loves it and can relate to it. It's, just, it's so, oh, it just makes my heart happy. <laughs> uh, if you had to appear live on the same bill, or open for three other artists, which three would it be? Hmm. Oh my gosh, that's a good question. Um, can they be, do they have to be alive? Anybody you want. Definitely <laughs> your because I don't know, but the thing is, is it'd be difficult to open for them because they're so insanely talented. But Amy Winehouse, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say, I really like Bruno Mars. He's one of my favorites. And um, I, I would say Billy Joel too. Um, <laughs> and, oh, a weird one that I've always been obsessed with is Jonas Brothers because oh, well. they're my childhood favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, mm -hmm. What best takeout food, downtown Toronto or New York City? <laughs> Ooh, come on any ramen place i'm gonna say oh like that count as takeout yeah well takeout okay. food or, or city food <laughs> oh there's a cool place in um new york called wagamama's wagamama's ramen i don't know how huge it is there but i went there once and it's like a huge thing of ramen or kenzo ramen if you're in toronto is really good Hmm. And it's not expensive. And I go there. If, if I ever uh, have a break at school, I'll go eat ramen by myself. <laughs> sit there and do homework. So. I have a friend in New York. And when I go see him, we will definitely check that out. Wagamamas. Uh, <laughs> Wagamamas. Yes. Um, I'm going to have to write that down. I'm never going to remember. Yeah. Um, it's confusing. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, I met your mom back in the day a, a couple of times back when uh, when she was at the city building. Um, hmm. it, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, not from a talent standpoint and from a sense of humor standpoint. Uh, there's a reason you two have such good chemistry on the mother-daughter date. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. I wish you the best of luck with the record when it does come out. Um, thank you. For, thanks a lot for being with us. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I'm thanks so happy to be here. Good luck and stay safe. Thank you. Thanks, Georgia.